Hello, my name is Andy Tusher and I am a data scientist with the province of British Columbia and I want to tell you today about uh, the newest package that we've developed uh, called BC Data which is used to retrieve public data from British Columbia data repositories, uh, especially spatial data. I've been working on this package for the last uh, year or so with my uh, collaborators Sam Albers and Stephanie Hazlitt and uh, yeah, I'm really excited to, to tell you about it today. Like I said, uh, I, I work in British Columbia uh, in the capital, Victoria. Um, if you don't know where British Columbia is, it's a really big province, uh, almost a million square kilometers uh, up in the northwest part of the continent, um, uh, just above Washington State, southeast of Alaska. Um, there, BC has a largely natural resource-based economy, um, and we have lots and lots of data. Um, not just about the natural resources, but all things in uh, all topics that you can think of, but, uh, but I work in the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change Strategy uh, in a group called State of Environment Reporting, um, and we work on analysis and reporting on the status and trends um, of BC's environment, so we're big users of environmental data in the province. Um, and we're also big proponents of open data and open science practices. Most of you have seen uh, a variant of this slide before, um, taken from the Tidyverse cookbook. Um, and it sort of outlines the, the sort of ideal, ideal workflow for uh, reproducible data science, starting with importing your data, tidying it into a format that works, um, visualizing it, modeling it, transforming it, doing some analysis to get some meaning out of that data, uh, and then communicating the results. Uh, and the thing that ties this all together makes it a reproducible workflow um, is that programming box that's around it. Um, uh, by writing all the steps of our analysis in code, uh, it makes it a reproducible uh, product that, that can be run by collaborators and reviewers. Uh, unfortunately, all too often, ac uh, accessing data and importing the data it kind of breaks, uh, breaks this reproducible workflow because it's not always readily available. Um, you may have it on your hard drive and no one else has easy access to it. You might have to email it to a collaborator or um, or you have to download it from a website manually to use it. Uh, and so that kind of breaks that scripted workflow and, um, and so that importation step becomes a critical link. Uh, and if we can add it in the code then we make the whole, the whole uh, workflow reproducible. So I want to do a quick introduction to the British Columbia data catalog. Um, it is uh, BC's online repository of, of all the public data that we that we uh, that we host. Um, there's thousands of data sets, um, close to 3,000 last count. Uh, most of them are available under an open license, which means that anybody can download that data and use it for um, whatever they like with very few, few constraints. Uh, and it's got a raft of both tabular and spatial data. And it's got great interfaces for, for downloading the data. So if you have, um, if there's some spatial data that you're interested in, there's a, uh, a great GUI where you can um, select your coordinate system, select your output format, select your area of interest, and you can download really, really big um, spatial data files from the catalog. So it, work, it works great. But, uh, and kind of as I alluded to earlier here, um, there's a bit of a problem and that not getting the data in your code uh, breaks that reproducibility. Um, it can't be scripted, and so it's not repeatable. And so, you know, the manual process is not ideal. But luckily, uh, there are APIs um, that sort of back all of the, the catalog stuff, and they're publicly available. Um, there's two key ones in particular. Uh, there's a catalog API, which allows you to access and search and retrieve metadata uh, as well as uh, many tabular data sets from the catalog. Uh, and he, very powerfully, there's also a, a web map library API um, that has both uh, an image overlay uh, web mapping service um, and really powerfully, it has a web feature service, which is a, a service that allows you to download the actual features themselves, um, the points, lines, and polygons, as well as all the attributes that go along with them for some really, really big data sets. And it has a really flexible um, query interface uh, via REST API so that you can get just what you need. 
Um, as many open source projects go, this started to as a as a means to, to scratch your own itch. So you know, the three of us were sitting down one day, and one of us said, "Hey, there's a great uh, API for accessing uh, spatial data from the catalog." I wrote a function; it works pretty well. So I said, "Hey, I just discovered that and wrote my own too the other day." And you know, the third person says, "Hey, I, I need that." Uh, and so obviously it was a, a catalyst for collaboration and to sort of sit down and turn this thing into a package that, that could be a lot more widely used. Uh, all of the functions of BC data um, are preceded by a BCDC underscore prefix to facilitate auto completion. Um, and there's a search function and there's a get record function that are sort of around uh, querying and searching for the metadata. Today I want to focus on uh, getting data uh, and, how, and how that can enable a reproducible workflow uh, and most specifically about um, spatial data. So for a quick demo uh, I want to uh, just pull up a, a data record that everyone can probably relate to on BC schools um, and the programs that they offer. Uh, so here's an example of a, of a catalog record. Um, a record is sort of the metadata around a data set uh, and it often comes with one or more, well it always comes with one or more resources which are the data themselves. And so here the, the record is the programs offered in schools and um, the resources are these um, these two files here, there's a comma delimited, uh, tab delimited text file and an Excel file. Uh, and so we're going to get the, the text file because it's sort of a more open standard. So we're going to use our BCDC get data function. Um, and from the, from the catalog page or from the BCDC get record function, you can get uh, sort of the unique ID for the record and the resource. And you specify those in the get data function and it will hit that API, determine what kind of data you're downloading. Um, most of the times it will find the correct import function and, uh, and bring in a nice, uh, nice table for you. So in this case it brings in a data frame of uh, schools across the province um, and their, the different services that they offer. So just a brief example of getting tabular data. Um, but really the sort of the most exciting piece from my perspective is the, the ability to get that spatial data um, and not only to get it but to, to query it. Um, and so the, the workhorse there is the BCDC query geodata function um, and it hits that WFS, the web feature service um, API uh, to get sort of fine-grained access to geographic, geographic information um, at the feature and property level. So it allows us to query query that data and get just what we want. Um, when we run this function just by itself, um, similar to dbplyr if you've used it to, act, to interface with data frames using a dplyr syntax, uh, when you run this function it doesn't actually get the data right away, it gives you a promise which is a sort of a, uh, an object that tells you this is what you're going to get when you eventually finish building your query and asking for the data itself. Uh, so if you run that function by itself with uh, the name of a record, so here we're looking at municipalities in the province, um, it gives you the message saying collect. Using the collect function will return 161 features in 20 fields. Um, and at most six rows of the record are printed here. So it gives you a little preview of, of what you'll get um, if you run collect um, at the end of your pipeline. So again, if you're familiar at all with the dbplyr framework, um, and dplyr in general, uh, we can sort of run BCDC query geo data and pipe that into select. So we can use that to select just a subset of columns that we want. Um, and it works with all the tidy select helpers. So it starts with matches, one of, etc. Um, here we're just selecting two, uh, two columns, the admin area abbreviation, admin area group name um, of those municipalities uh, in BC. And again, this isn't actually running the query and downloading the data for you, but it's giving you a preview of what you'll get. So we still have 161 features because we haven't used filter, um, but we're only getting five fields now, um, five columns. 
And we get five because there are all, even though we asked for two, there's always a few sticky columns that come along for the ride, and those are sort of the important um, object IDs and, uh, and similar identifiers um, for the rows. And we can get rid of those later if we don't really don't want them. So after running select, we can pipe that into filter, again, just like dplyr and dbplyr. Um, and here we're just using a standard logical, um, using the double equals to say, give me all of those rows, all of those features um, that have an admin area group name of capital regional district. And so that is the regional district in which I live. Um, regional districts in BC are like counties uh, in the United States. So sub-provincial uh, uh, geographic agglomerations. Uh, again, we haven't run collect, so we get another message saying this is now going to return 13 features because there are 13 municipalities within the capital regional district. Um, and those five fields, the two that we asked for and the three that we didn't, but we have no choice to take. Uh, so finally, we've finished building our, our pipeline and we say we want the data now. So we just tag on collect to the end of the pipeline, just like in dbplyr. Um, interfacing with the database and it will send that query to the web server. It will run it and it will download just those features and just those columns that we asked for and return it as an F SF object. And so now we've got a real SF object. We've got 13 features, six fields. It's a multi-polygon um, and this is something that we now know how to work with uh, in our normal workflow. And just to, to show that we've got what we asked for, this is the capital regional district with the boundaries of the 13 municipalities um, that are within it. Um, I live down uh, down in one of those southern ones um, in Victoria. And so that's all awesome. So we've offloaded a whole bunch of work to the server. We're getting data that we want. Um, we filtered rows and we've, sub we've selected columns. Um, but we can also filter based on geometry. Um, so WFS allows uh, doing geometric operations um, using the sort of standard set of logical geometric predicates that, that many of us are used to using, such as intersects, uh, equals, within, contains, overlaps, all of these sort of geometric comparisons. Um, and so what, we, what I want to do now is show you how we can take that, um, that CRD municipalities object that we just created, which shows just the municipalities within the capital regional district, and use that to get the, all of the green spaces, the parks and protected areas that are within that regional district, within the capital regional district, using um, these geometric predicates. So I'm not going to show you the... Uh, the catalog record for it right now, but there's a, a record of local and regional green spaces. So we put that ID into our BCDC query geodata function. We can pipe that into select to just get the columns we want, park name, park type, and the primary use. Uh, and then we can pipe that again, and uh, this is the, the great part, into filter. And instead of using a logical predicate, uh, we're using a geometric predicate. So we're saying, just give me those green spaces that intersect the CRD municipality. And so remember that CRD municipality object, CRD mun, uh, is an SF object. And so that goes along um, with the query. We run collect on this. It sends the whole shebang to the server and um, does the, the processing, finds the green spaces that intersect with that, that object, and just downloads those ones that we want. And so now we can plot those on top of our CRD municipalities and, uh, and we can see that we just have those dark green places, those, those nice parks um, that intersect the, the regional district that I live in. So just to recap, uh, BC Data is a new package um, that provides access to thousands of data sets from the BC catalog um, directly within R. Uh, it's a novel interface, as far as we know, to WFS service using this familiar dplyr syntax and a, sort of a new dbplyr front end to a web service back end instead of a database back end. Um, it allows you to perform spatial and non-spatial queries um, and to just get the data that you need and incorporate that into a reproducible spatial analysis workflow. 
So I just want to give a great big shout out to Sam and Stephanie uh, who uh, worked uh, really hard on this with me. Um, the data catalog team who uh, have answered millions of questions for us about how the APIs and the data are structured and how they all work. And, and especially to our employers for encouraging us and allowing um, space for innovation and collaboration. Um, finally, um, BC Data is on CRAN. Um, uh, you can use the install bot packages to get it. Uh, we have a package down site at bcgov.github.io slash bcdata. We've got some nice vignettes on there. Um, this file any issues or bugs you find uh, on the GitHub uh, page. Um, and hit up uh, myself, Sam, or Steph Hazlitt um, uh, on Twitter. Those are our handles. Um, and find us on GitHub as well. Um, so thank you very much. I hope everybody's enjoying their virtual um, St. Louis Use Our conference. Um, and I hope to see you at a future one.